In this video, I'll be covering a topic around religion and atheism equally as much because it relates directly to the dynamic I'll be talking about here, and that is the foundation of belief systems. Technically speaking, this can apply for political as well as social systems as well, but I think this applies even more so truly in a religious context. I'll be working for the premise of how your foundation of your theism or atheism will determine the nature of your belief and or relationship to the religion or a religious position. This is to say that your intention and what will cause the event, the foundation of the belief, simply put, what makes the motivations directly, directly directed to your choices. That will determine much of the development. Is the course of action based on fashion, fairness and truth? Do you act on the foundation to avoid punishment? and or hate against you as to mitigate it or do you base your foundation on popularity alone as to not have the strength to fight for yourself which one you work with will determine how your relationship between yourself and religion or non-religious stance will develop so in an incorrect or flawed start or foundation it will plague or curse your entire relationship if you do nothing to fix the faulty aspects it sometimes make it far worse Let's begin with semantics, shall we? This semantics will matter because I'll be going with belief, trust, faith, assurance, and verify, because these all impact this dynamic importantly, as each addresses each unique dynamic towards this. Let's start off with belief. Belief is just simply put, if, as per the Cambridge Dictionary, belief in being certain that something exists or is true, something you that you believe simply put that is neither verified or un unverified but more about a personal certainty and that is where i said in this video introduction the belief aka the thing you believe in and its foundation matters itself because this dynamic will get more complex as this goes and i'll be going into some more examples. Trust is, then, a short reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something, with, or be, in which with confidence is placed, dependent, uh, or as per said here, dependence on something, future, da -da -da -da, reliance on, so on, so on. Basically, this is a direct connection with belief about do you how do you relate to the belief? Do you trust in it? Or is it something you do not necessarily trust in? Next, we're going to faith. I'm using this example here as per how Christians define faith in terms of religious context. That is due to the nature of it because, um, for example, right here it says, and I'll mention this for a reason, because I will be a context I'll be going over will meant basically be fixing on faith rather than physicality. For example, right, what it says this Faith is more than an than intellectual agreement to use an, an illusion. Imagine if you're at Niagara Falls watching a tightrope walk a push a wheelbarrow across a blah, blah, blah. At an intellectual level, you may believe that he could successfully push his way across the over the fall, but you are not exercising biblical faith until you get in the wheelbarrow and entrust yourself in a tight rope walker. And what it says here is basically one as defined this here. Thus, faith means putting your trust in God and having confidence he will fulfill his promises. I want to say this, this can relate to any other deity in terms of religion, be it Allah or so on, or whatever other religion you want to apply to this dynamic. Um, whatever deity you have, you can put faith can be put in there, faith trusting in your deity. A show instead is directly related to belief that is the state of being assured, such as a as a being certain in the mind, b confident in mind or manner is easily freedom from self-doubt or uncertainty 
something that inspires or tends to inspire confidence. This relates as well to the dynamic as this is the assurance mindset can be there, regardless of verified or unverified, in which faith is unverified beliefs, in which it's taken seriously, whereas the next thing I'll be covering is about verified beliefs, which is much shorter than tr trust or faith, but it's more important to the dynamic, and this is something in which is where often the stumbling ground is surrounding discussions around religion. The final key definition to highlight here is verify. This is where the term verified belief or just ver verification comes into play. Verify. To establish the truth, accuracy, or reality of, to confirm, or, sub or substantiate by law, in law by oath. Either works for this case. For example, this is where conflict between if you get your mindset and beliefs from verification or faith matters. The very metrics in which you can get your foundation, if by faith, is a lot looser, whereas if you get by verification, it's a lot stricter in definitional standards, and there's less leeway for inadequacies in the grand scheme of things. Because verification requires it to be actually true, and all that. I guess, though, there's other themes I can cover, which I can cover later, but these are the first five important terms needed. These are important, as this will lead into the basic introduction towards this, of what I'll be covering in this philosophical explainer. So why then does it, do these terms matter? That's because, regardless of if you're an atheist or theist, you need a reason to be so. These are all very philosophical positions in which in which only applies to the question of do you believe gods, a god, gods, or higher powers exist? Yes or no? And at the grand scale of things, it's not that important. The actual importance of it, though, might value more to someone who is deeply religious because then they have more of an incentive to be more on the right path in accordance with their own mindset surrounding it in the first place. And that itself is one of the biggest issues surrounding this because the disparity between what is accepted as evidence or proof will change depending on the position. For example, materialistic atheists will not accept faith reasoning or emotional reasoning, whereas Spirit, super spiritualistic people tend to not look so kindly upon a hyper materialistic worldview of things. And the excerpt for reasoning in this is covered by Christian science. And that is a reasoning why I mentioned faith being following God's will. The question of then what is God's will is another determining factor. How then do you define God's will? Do you define God's will as what is being preached to you by others? Do you define it by your own individual values? Do you see it as the cultural version of it? Or do you see it as something else other than that completely? The foundation, therefore, if you are religious, needs to then depend on two cases. One, are you fundamentalist or not? A fundamentalist religious person will then see religion in a completely different way than a non-fundamentalist person around religion. As a direct result of that, the relationship between even between inter-religious discussions is like that of the more progressive Christians and the traditional Christians in this example, where the more traditional Christians see the progressive Christians as non-Christians or traitors. Whereas the liberal Christians see fault and harm in the traditionalists in their messaging. And that's where the foundation, in this case, could potentially make one huge issue in the grand scheme of things. 
one disclaimer I will say now is I'm using a lot of Christian sources. That's not out of malice for other religions, but more so the case that the books I physically have are more predominantly Christian, and I came from a Christian background before I became an atheist. So it's more of a case of that. Nothing insidious. Um, I will be mentioning one case of Islam because it's an interest because I have been talking with Muslims uh, now more and more, just in general, just to try and get some understanding. But I'm still nowhere near the level of understanding as I am with, Christ with Christianity itself. So a lot of the books I'll be citing are Christian. Just keep in mind that that is not insidious on my end, but rather just a thing of convenience and trying to cover multi faiths entirely is pointless to this discussion because the nature of faith and the deception of faith as well is not just in Christianity, it's in all religions equally alike, including most likely your own religion, if you are watching this. First things first, I'll be addressing Christian science as they address the faith element of this to the point. That is to say, let me just get it. The world must grow to the spiritual understanding of prayer. It, it, if good enough to profit by Jesus' cup of earthly sorrows, God will sustain us under these sorrows until we are thus divinely qualified and are willing to drink his cup. Millions of vain repetitions will never pour into prayer the unicorn of the spirit in demonstration of power. And with signs following, Christian science reveals a necessary for overcoming the world, the flesh and evil, and thus destroying the, the error world, the flesh and evil, uh, the, the, sorry, the error. <laughs> sorry, sorry, exactly there. Seeking is not sufficient. It is striving that enables us to enter spiritual attachments, open a door to one of the forms of worship in I, forgot, I can't say the word, sorry, is to carry out a pray, praying machine through the streets and stop at the doors to earn a penny by grinding out a prayer. But the advantage guard of progress has paid for the privilege of prayer, the price of persecution. Experiences teaches us that we do not always receive the blessings we ask for in prayer. There are some mis misapprehension of, for, of the source and means of all goodness and blessedness, or we should certainly receive that for which we ask. The scripture says, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss what ye may consume it upon your lusts. That is also extended on, on at, a later date, at a later page, where it says, prayer to a corporal God affects the sick like a, like a drug which has no efficiency of its own, but borrows its power from human faith and belief. The drug does nothing because it has no intelligence. It is a moral belief, not a divine principle of, of love. Sorry, divine, not, not divine principle or love, which causes a drug to be apparently either poisonous or sanative. The common custom of praying for the recovery of the sick finds help in blind belief. Where, whereas help should come from the enlightened understanding, changes in belief may go on indefinitely, but they are not merchandise of human thought and, and not the outgrowth of divine science. Does deity impose in behalf of one worshipper and help the other? Who, who offers the same measure of prayer? If they recover because they pray or are prayed for audibly, only, only petting, petty, I can't say I can't say the word because it's across the think line. Um, should get well in divine science where prayers are mentally are mental, all all may avail themselves of God as a very present help in trouble. Love is impartial and universal. Its adaptation and bestowals. It is in the open thought which cries, Ho, everyone is free, is free of come to you waters. Which says then extended by 
entirely separate from belief and, and dream of of marital living is the life divine revealing spiritual understanding and the consciousness of man's dominion over the whole earth this understanding casts out one error and heals the sick and with it you can speak as one having authority when thou prayer enter the closet when thou my father has thy door pray to your father which is in secret and thou brother, and thou father which seeth in secret shall so yeah you get the point the reason for this is to mention as per as per on 100 page 17 as well because this is a interesting dynamic when talking about faith i'll relate this to other stuff in a second for example it says the term individuality is open to objections because an individual may be one of a series, one of many, as an as an individual man, an individual horse, whereas God is one, not one of a series, but one alone and without an equal. God is spirit, therefore the language of the spirit must be and is spiritual. Christian science attaches no physical nature to the significance of the supreme being or his man or his manifestation. Mortals, mortals alone do this. God's ascent essential language is spoken of in of in the last chapter of mark's gospel as a new tongue the spiritual meaning of which is to attain to through science following ear has not heard nor has slip, lip spoken his pure language or spirit a master taught spirituality by by similarities and parables as as divine student he unfolded God as to man, illustrating and demonstrating life and truth to in himself. And by his power over the sick and sinning, human theories are inadequate to interpret the divine principle involved in the miracles brought on by Jesus, and especially in this mighty crowning, unparalleled and triumphant exit from the flesh. That is an example of how faith alone logic is applied. The reason why that is important is because when I go over other stuff, it may cover different aspects, but the faith alone aspect is the divine command theory is then the natural progression from by faith alone. The divine command theory, as described here, is philosophers both past and present sought to defend theories of ethics which are grounded in a theistic framework roughly divine command theory is a view that morality is somewhat dependent upon god and that moral obligation consists of in obedience to god's commands divine command theory includes the claim that morality, morality is ultimately based on command commands of the character of god and that the, mor the morality right of action is is the one god commands or requires the specific content of these divine, divine commands varies according to the particular religion and the particular view of the individual divine command theorist. But all versions of the, of the theory hold in common the claim that morality and moral obligations do ultimately depend on God, which is a anti-humanism rhetoric. This then leads into burden of proof and what is verified or not. This is going to be the clear distinction of the claims between theists and atheists. The verifiable nature of things <laughs> might be very, very different. For example, under Catholic doctrine, <clears throat> they haven't they have a whole explanation about why you seek God. Whereas under a atheistic idealism, it's less about that. And more about the psychological impacts of religion, and basically for some, the need to not to rely, not on religion itself, but to be an individual person, able to live without the controlling mechanisms of religion. That is the critical element here. The next source I would go over. I would go over some in the and yeah, sorry. And in that, I'll go over some things in which I covered as a child when I was going into my confirmation in the Catholic Church. Confirmation is is after baptism, 
it's the it's a, it's in Catholic Church where your your basically your adulthood ceremony within the, the religion itself. And this was the study guide which we went through in the first place. It is called UCAT, and it covers and it covers basic theology in it. As I mentioned before, before being atheist, I was Catholic. More specifically, I was actually quite involved in the Catholic Church. Uh, I was doing altar service and all of that stuff. So, for example, in UCAT, which is the theolo theological guideline for training in confirmation, it said here, Chapter 1. Man is deceptive to God. Question 3. Why do we seek God? Which it says, God has placed in our hearts a longing to seek and find him. St. Augustine says, You have made us for yourself, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. We call this longing for God. It is natural for man to seek God. All our strength for truth and, truth and happiness is ultimately in the search for the one who supports us absolutely, satisfies us, satisfies us absolutely, and employs us absolutely in his service. A person is not complete himself until he has found God. Anyone who seeks truth seeks God, whether he may realise it or not. Can we know the existence of God by our own reason? Question 4. Yes, human reason can know God with certainty. The world ca cannot have its origin and its destination without within itself. In everything that exists, there is more than we see. The order, the beauty, and the development of the world point beyond themselves to towards God. Every man is receptive to what is true, good, and beautiful. He hears within himself. The voice of consci consciousness, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, of conscious consciousness, which urges him him to do what is good and warns against what is evil. Anyone, anyone who anyone who follows this is path reasonably finds God. Question five: Why do people deny that God exists if they can know Him by reason? To know the invisible God is a great challenge for the human mind. Many are scared off by it. Another reason is that some do not want to know God is because they do not have the have to change their life. Anyone who says that the question about God is meaningless because it cannot be answered is, is making things too easy for him for himself. Can, uh, question six: Can we grasp God at all in concepts? Is it possible to speak about him meaningfully? Although we we men are limited and the infinite greatness of God can never n never fit into the finite human concepts, we can nevertheless speak rightly about God. In order to express some things about God, we u we use imp imperfect images and limited n notions. And so everything we say about God is subject to the reservations that our language is not equal to God's greatness. Therefore, we must constantly purify and improve our speech about God. Chapter two: God approaches us men. Why did why did God have to show have to show Himself in order to be able to know what He is like? Man can know by reason that God exists, but not what God really is like. Yet, because God would very much like to be known he had revealed himself um i'm gonna skip this some sections because it's actually tedious in the long one i'll try and find an appropriate one and as you can see the actual the actual claim here being made in this was not necessarily that convincing if you're already a religious person, you would be convinced by it. If you're not, you're not. Here we go. Let's go to let's go to chapter three then, because there's some more interesting questions in chapter three being mentioned. Question twenty: How can we respond to God when He speaks to us? 
To respond to God means to believe him. Anyone who wants to be- believe needs a heart that is ready to listen. In many ways, God seeks contact with us in every human encounter, in every moving experience, moving experience of nature, in every apparent coincidence. In every challenge, every suffering, there was a hidden message from God to us. He speaks even more clearly to us when he turns uh, to us in his words, voice to our conscious, consciousness. He addresses us as friends, therefore we too should respond to as friends and believe him, trust him completely, learn to understand him better and accept his will without reservation. Faith, what is it? Question 21. Faith is knowledge and knowledge and trust. It is it, has, it has several characters. Faith is the sheer gift of God which we receive when we ask for it. Faith is the supernatural power that is absolutely necessary if we are to attain salvation. Faith requires the free will and clear understanding of a person when he accepts the divine invitation. Faith is an absolute is absolutely certain because Jesus guaranteed it. Faith is. In, incomplete unless it leads to active love. Faith grows when we listen more and more, are carefully to God's word, and enter a lively exchange with him in prayers. Faith gives us now an ever more taste of joy in heaven. Many people say that to believe is not enough for them. They want to know the word believe. However, the two complete the me- two, two complete different meanings. If a parachutist asks the cleric at the airport, is the parachute packed safely? And a man casually says, hmm, I believe so. Then, uh, then that will not be enough for him. He will need, he would like to know for sure. But if he has asked a friend to pack the parachute, then the friend answers the same question by saying, yes, I did it personally so he can trust me. I mean, it's very simplistic like logic, but whatever this was made for, Younger, younger people. I will now skip to to question twenty four because there's some stupid commentary here in here I do not want to cover for sake of time. Question twenty four: What does my faith have to do with the church? No one can believe alone and by himself, and no one can just live alone by himself. We receive the faith from the church and live it out in fellowship with the people whom we share our faith. Faith is the most personal thing a person has, yet it is not a private matter. Everyone who wants to believe must be able to say I and we because of faith. You cannot share and communicate with the irrational. Uh, you cannot share and communicate would be irrational. Sorry. The individual believer gives his free assent to the we believe of the church. From her, he receives the faith. She was the one who handed it down through the centuries and to him preserved it from falsifications and caused it to shine forth again and again. Believing is therefore participation in a common conviction, the faith of others supporting me, just as the feather in my faith enkindles and strengthens others. The church emphasizes I and the we of faith, using the two professions of faith in the liturgies, the Apostles' Creed, the Creed that begins, I believe, the Credo, um, and the Great Creed of Nicaea, Constantinople, which is the origin, begins with the words, we believe. Christmas. I won't go into any more detail because it's, uh, uh, yeah. But you get my point from this dynamic, how ultimately the nature between faith, religion, and you is wanting to be put, in some cases, as an absolute connection which can be broken, almost as if it's human nature to believe in God, and if you don't, you're not following human nature. Which is where a lot of the issues of religion come into play. A lot of issues with religion, therefore, is around this sort of ballpark area where it's much harder to justify the verification process of it. And again, this falls back to what I was saying about the divine command theory is that the morality and and community comes from God. Their perception of God, anyway. Um, and to go into this, I'll talk less now about religious stuff and more so 
about general stuff and how this all relates to each other. Because I just want I just need to cover this element first to highlight points in that section. And with that, I will end this subsection about the Catholic Church. I will now end this part of this thing. This topic isn't over. I'll do a part two of this. This is to only to follow a few sources here and there to begin the introduction of topic. I will do a much deeper dive into it in two or three parts. I want to cover certain amounts of content per thing, but not overwhelm people too much. So, for example, in this, I covered a few sources, two books, and all that. Uh, and I will try to make sure that the second part leads into more of a development in this. But before, but when, but when you actually see part two pop up, I will not be backtracking on anything in this at all. So if you didn't actually reach the end of this video, I'm not going to help you out if you did, in part two, if you get lost. Because I covered all the bases I need to cover in this one. And if you failed to keep up to date with the ending of this one, then think I will cover your asses in part two. You're wrong. I won't. Because there's a lot of stuff I want to cover in this. And if I have to spend like five minutes backtracking and rehashing, it's going to be too much of an annoying task to do. So, regardless, this is end of part one. And I hope you actually enjoyed it. I have a lot more sources I can bring into it, and more, more sources ready to go for it. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any comments or thoughts, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. I'll be interested to see what you have to say.